Hello, Iowa Wild fans, and welcome to episode nine of Wild Wednesdays presented by Explore Minnesota. Ben Gislason here with you on a little bit of a brisk afternoon here in the city of Des Moines. Again, great to have you all on board here for episode nine of Wild Wednesdays. Again, no matter which route you take, they can all lead to your true north. Head to exploreminnesota.com today to check out all the North Star State has to offer. After flying solo last week, it's great to be joined here this afternoon by Iowa Wild assistant coach, Richard Bachman, and even more notably, former National Hockey League netminder with the Dallas Stars and the Vancouver Canucks, as well as a 2015 AHL All-Star, all-time AHL record of 133 wins, 86 losses, and 36 decided in overtime or a shootout. So, Bacher, it's great to have you aboard with us here this afternoon. I know I'm certainly looking forward to it, and our fans, I bet, are as well. How are you today? I'm doing well, Ben. Thanks for having me. Looking forward to this, too. So... I want to give a brief intro for everybody that's just joining us in case we have anybody who's hopping on board for the first time as our show usually we begin we introduce our guest we'll talk a little bit about upcoming about a really really strong wild performance this past weekend and a really strong performance over the last eight games for this wild club we've got our state of hockey trivia at the end of the show which will give you an opportunity to potentially get your hands on two tickets to an upcoming wild home game we'll get to some fan questions so if anybody wants to comment or ask any questions about Maybe Bachman as a goaltender, Bachman as a goaltending coach, or just about Richard as a human being, because he's a great one. Feel free to throw that on our social media, on our Facebook comment side as well. A few items to touch on before we launch into the show. Next home weekend, April 23rd and 24th, for both Friday and Saturday night, fans can get $12 off each ticket using the promo code BOLDY for Matt Boldy. That's B-O-L-D-Y. That also includes the April 30th game, which is against the Chicago Wolves here at Wells Fargo Arena. Again, head to our website, iowawild.com, and if you type in BOLDY as the promo code, you can get $12 off each of your tickets. Well, Richard, right now, no one's been hotter over the last eight games in the AHL than your Iowa Wild. 6-0-2 in the last eight games played. Gone from last place in the Central Division to now you're nipping at the heels of a Grand Rapids team who you play this weekend out at Van Andel Arena. In your eyes, Bacher, why do you think things have been going so well as of late for Iowa? Yeah, it's been, uh, it's been a great little run, and I think it can be attributed to a couple different things. I think you look at the, the character of the guys we have in the locker room, and to me, that's probably the biggest thing is these guys, our players, they take pride in what they do. And when you're sitting in the bottom of the division, those guys take it personally. And we have a great group of guys that care for each other. And you've seen that in the way we play. We, we stick up for each other. We're not afraid to get in there. We're not backing down from anything. And so I think it's the pride the guys have to dig themselves out of this. And now once you, you see it and it gets rolling, now you're starting to see him play with some confidence. Our lineup's been a little bit more consistent over the, the last 10 games or so, and that always helps. And that's one thing with the American Hockey League is you never know exactly what your lineup's going to look like um, with call-ups or injuries, and this year with the taxi squad. So having a little bit of consistency, I think, has helped. And then, again, it's the guys playing for one another, wanting to dig themselves out and doing the little things in order to do that. And the second... The second key really has been special teams to me. Um, I know in the hockey world, a lot of people, you live and die by your special teams. And over this little run we've been on, the, the penalty kill has been phenomenal. Um, we're getting some power play goals thrown in there. And when you start winning the special teams game, you start winning hockey games. Um, other than that, you're starting to see the real foundation of our game. Guys are getting real comfortable with it. They're understanding the systems better. Um, given a weird shortened season, it took us a little bit to get going, but guys are now confident in what we're trying to accomplish out there. And, and now we're finally getting the results that we probably should have got a little bit earlier, but now we're starting to see them more consistently and it's, it's great. And you're real happy for the guys for their hard work, seeing some results now. You bring up the penalty kill and the old adage is your best penalty killer has to be your goaltender. And through a lot of these games over this eight game stretch, arguably the best player on the ice most nights has been the wild goaltender, whether it be Hunter Jones, who was sparkling down in Texas for an, a CCM AHL Player of the Week award that week. You come right back, Derek Barabo, who 
We all know this Wild organization has been wanting to get games in. He missed time because of some injury early, and then he was up and down with the Minnesota Taxi Squad, so he's played the last three, has been very, very strong, was really good last night. So I'd love to, to have you really talk about all three of those goaltenders because, by the way, Joel Rumpel has stepped in, and he's delivered some great performances as well for this team. And I know early on things were a little bit under the weather for this goaltending status of the team, but recently the goaltending has been phenomenal pretty much every single night. Go through it. Talk about each goaltender for me because I know all three are very different as goalies, as people, and you know that better than anybody. Yeah, definitely. Um, I, I guess just to start, you got to, for me in my position in trying to help move these young athletes along in their careers, you have to take a step back and realize that with, with Barbs and Jonesy especially, they're, they're 20 and 21 years old. So they're, they're young guys. They're new in this league. And there's a lot of learning curves coming into pro hockey and into the American Hockey League, which is an incredible league and it can be a tough league to be a goalie in. So, so a little bit early on, we went through some growing pains, but I give those guys credit for sticking with it and, and trusting the process and trusting the plan that we've implemented and, and seeing it through in the long run. And now we're, again, just like the team is, we're starting to finally see some results there. So that's been fantastic. And so for, for Barb's, it's been a it's been a little bit of a wild year um, between call ups and the injury, playing a bunch and then not for a while. Um, so so for him, we're just he, he's done a he's done a great job this year of kind of simplifying his game. He's a he's an ultimate competitor. He'll he'll do whatever it takes to make the save. Um, so for him, sometimes it's reining in some of that aggressiveness. And allowing him to use some of his size, but like I said, he's a, he's a, he just competes all the time. He'll come up with those big saves, um, and, and so he's he's had a great year so far. And again, we're just we're taking it one day at a time, and we're just trying to let him grow as a goalie so he can have more success later on. And, and Jonesy's come a long ways. So he comes in, he's a little bit more technical. Um, he hasn't had any pro experience heading into this season and kind of got thrown into the thrown into the fire early, which there's no better way to learn than getting in there and, and doing it. And I applaud him for what was a very tough stretch mentally um, when things aren't going your way, the puck's not bouncing your way, you're just, for some reason, you're fighting it just a little bit. He really stuck with it and just seen a ton of growth in the mental side of his game as well as some of the you know the, the physical side so he's he's been working with Audrey our strength coach a little bit more you're seeing the strength starting to come around and now he's starting to get some speed and power into his game so again it's all little things that we're trying to accomplish and it takes time and so those guys are um, they're, they're doing a great job they're sticking with it they're trusting the process and now we're now we're getting some results and it's, it's fun to watch as a coach to see them grow like they have and then it brings us to Joel Rumpel, who's a little bit older guy. Uh, he's been around pro hockey a lot longer. He hasn't spent a lot of time in the American Hockey League, but he's had a taste of it here and there. Um, and, and I have to credit him just as much. So I'm in there trying to help coach them, but I'm not in the room with them every day. And so Joel is having some of that pro experience. He's been a guy that those two can kind of lean on and, and come to with questions they may not always want to hear from my voice all the time. <laughs> they can go talk yeah. with Joel, and he's, he's got the best attitude. He's upbeat, he's positive, and in practice, he's competing. And he, he wants to play, and he doesn't let that side of it go, but he's still an, an amazing teammate in helping those two younger guys come along. And it was, it's fun to watch a guy like that that does everything right, works hard, puts in the time, pays his dues, doesn't say a word, and then he gets, you know, he gets a big start the other weekend and starts out with a body check and <laughs> just his energy. And it, it you know, it, it kind of sparks, it sparks the guys and, and gave them a little life. And, you know, and then he goes down to Texas, has another good game. And so it's, it's great to see a guy that's, you know, trying to still establish himself at a later point in his career, doing the things right and getting these opportunities. So it's, it's been, it's been uh, like you said, the, the start wasn't what we wanted as a goalie side of things. 
but it's been rewarding to see things start to grow mm -hmm. and now get some results in there as we move along. I've got to do a quick follow up on, on the Rumpel scream out to the left hand wall where he then tabletop to Grand Rapids forward. What was going through your head when he came flying out of his crease there? I got to know. Well, at first, I so when the play originated, I was like, okay, like he probably has a breakaway. So mm -hmm. I was I was happy. He, he decided he was going, he was gone. So I was like, <laughs> all right. Um, and then looking back on it, he pretty much body checked him below the hash mark in the corner. Yeah. Um, and so we were like, well, maybe we should just tone that part down just a little <laughs> bit. I don't know if we need to be quite that aggressive. But it, it, for me, I was just, you know, I love it. It's, uh, he made a decision, he was confident in it, and he just went for it. And luckily it worked out, but you know, that's, that's what you need back there. You yeah. gotta be confident in what you're gonna do and be assertive, and if you're doing it, just go all the way and get it done. Yeah, that's a great point. When goalies do get into trouble is that indecisiveness at times. You either got to go or you got to not go. And he definitely went. Yep. That was for sure on that play. Uh, again, we're here on Wild Wednesdays with Wild goaltending coach Richard Bachman uh, talking some goaltending fraternity, talking some Iowa Wild hockey. Thanks for joining us. A hello to Trevor, Aaron, Ben, Susan, all who said hello here on the feed. Great to have you on board with us here this afternoon. Uh, two of those three Goaltenders are rookies, Bacher, and, and rookies outside of the goal have been a huge part of the success recently for this wild team. Damian Giroux, 11 points over this eight game, eight game stretch. He's been fabulous. Mitchell Chafee right behind him with nine points. Kalen Addison, outstanding, nine points over this last eight game stretch. And then Matt Boldy, who comes in and in his first two games as a pro, has three points, including two one-timers from the right circle. One that was as wicked of a release as you'll see into the top right corner that made the game 4-3 as a part of an epic comeback last weekend. I want to ask you, because as a goaltender, not only as a goalie yourself, but as a goaltending coach, you obviously have studied a lot of shooters in your day. And from my perch, I've noticed Matt Boldy, his one-timer is obviously fabulous. He's got a sensational release. He can just, in general, even if it's not a one-timer, he can really shoot it. But his mechanics, they seem different than other shooters I've seen when he winds up to let the big one go. It's almost like he cradles the puck a little bit on a one-timer. What have you made of the release of Matt Boldy? Yeah, yeah. So I'm still trying to figure it out myself just a little <laughs> yeah, bit. Yeah. So um, we, don't, we don't always get to see the full effect of it in practice just because guys have a little bit of respect for their teammates. Um, but you get it in a game and he can let it fly. So the thing I've noticed is it's just his stick. He's got such a great stick. So no matter where that pass is, whether it's in tight to his body or a little bit away, he's able to get a good release off of it. And it's a quick release. He gets it off quick, in tight. He almost, he doesn't have a big sweeping motion that sells it. It almost catches you off guard on the release, which is key. It's, it's on and off in a heartbeat. And uh, he, he, just thinking about it here, just for a minute while you were getting going, I brought me back to when I was playing in Dallas. We had Yager there, and Jamie Ben was a young, young player. And I remember Yager talking with Benny, and he was basically saying, uh, "You got to do things just a little different if you want to be great in this league. Like you got to have something that's a little bit more unique that players don't see all the time." And I think we kind of see that with Boldy's release. It's it's not your typical sweeping motion where you can kind of pick up where he's looking. He he kind of hides the release and then gets it off quick and kind of catches, you can catch you off guard with it. A great segue into the next portion of our show where I wanted to talk about Richard Bachman, the goalie. I, I certainly remember watching you, whether it be in Dallas or Vancouver or when I was growing up, um, definitely more so than just a backup in the National Hockey League. Like you had some stretches of play in the National League where you were accounted upon to make saves and you, and you did so. Um, so it, it's fun for me to sit down and talk to you here today, Bacher, about this. And I, I love the goaltending profession because I, I think about goalies much like I think about Major League Baseball pitchers, but I would almost argue there's more of a physical demand for goalies than there is of pitchers. It's such a combination of physical athleticism and then mental fortitude because the spotlight is always on you at all times. When you win, you might get the credit, but when you lose, you oftentimes get the blame. So for you as a kid growing up, Getting into hockey, when did the gears start turning for Richard Bachman to throw on the pads? Yeah, it was early. Um, I think 
you, if you're a goalie, you just always known you needed to be a goalie. It was something about having objects coming at me, whether <laughs> I was playing baseball, I wanted to be a catcher. Hockey, I wanted to be a goalie. Um, so there's something, something in the wires there that get crossed, I think, where you want the option, you want the objects flying at you. But for me, it all started um, when I was a young kid, my family, we were living in Colorado. We ended up moving to upstate New York, Saranac Lake, right next to Lake Placid, um, where you had Miracle on ice. And so hockey, wintertime, you played hockey. Mm -hmm. that's, all, yeah, that's all you did up there. Um, but it was that s basically that same year or two, the Quebec Nordiques moved to Colorado. And they ended up winning the cup there in 96 uh, with Patrick Waugh. And so from being from Colorado, and then they had a team, all, that's all I watched was Colorado Avalanche. And then you're watching Patrick Waugh in there, and he's a, the ultimate competitor and winner. Um, and he's got a fiery side. He was just entertaining to watch. He was an amazing athlete. And so watching him and seeing the spotlight on him, I just guess that's what triggered it for me. I was like, that looks awesome. And they got the pads and cool masks. And I was like, I was just drawn in at that point to, I, I knew like that was it. And from there, I just, I always wanted to play goalie. I drove my brother crazy. Every second we were home, I'm like telling him to shoot whatever we had in the house, <laughs> just shoot it at me, just shoot it at me. And so that's kind of where it just started and just ran with it. Yeah, that's terrific. What can you remember? Is there a strangest item that you got shot at you from your brother in the house? Uh, no, not nothing too strange. I know one house we had, it was we had a woods, the stairs, the wood on it was painted white, and I don't know how or why my parents let me do this, but I would put on full gear and I'd have my sh brother shoot real hockey pucks. So after a year <laughs> of that, the whole, all the white paint's black. Uh, other than that, we had a couple broken windows. I'd make him shoot golf balls at me in the living yeah. room. My parents are like, come on, like, can we at least use something a little softer. So I didn't, I didn't want anything soft. I wanted the real thing and I'm uh, sure it, it drove my parents crazy, but they were awesome with it and they supported me the whole way. Um, and just let me run with it. That's outstanding stuff. Uh, you bring up Patrick Waugh, and, and I think about one of my all-time favorite goalie rivalries and really just team rivalries, the Avalanche and the Detroit Red Wings oh, yeah. in the 90s, and Chris Osgood and so Patrick good. Waugh. I mean, just off-the-charts level com com competitors there in Chris Osgood and Patrick Waugh. And for you, when you think about, again, to use the pitching analogy, there are pitching duels, there are goalie duels as well. When you think back on your career, whether it's at Colorado College or in the AHL or the NHL, was there one or two goalies that you remember as like a nemesis type goalie for you that if you knew you were starting and this guy was starting, there was an extra level of intensity to your night? Uh, yeah, and to go back real quick, sorry to interrupt, with no, no, no. The, the rivalry between the Avs and Red Wings, uh, which was epic. I loved it. You had Wah, Vernon, Osgood, like those guys are going toe to toe, uh, just complete battles. Um, we just moved back to Colorado from New York as a family. And it's kind of when hockey was, they were trying to crack down on some of this stuff. And so I was going to my first game, Avs Red Wings game. And I was so excited, the rivalry, I was like ready for it go to the game, not one penalty the entire game. I was like, you gotta be <laughs> yeah, kidding me. Yeah. I've been watching this for years, waiting for my chance to see it in person. Yeah. And it was just like a clean slate, like nothing going on. So I was pretty bummed, but uh, <laughs> no, for me, rivalries on the ice, I, my mindset was I didn't, I never really got too emotionally involved on what was going on on the other side. Um, uh, for me, I didn't feel like it helped me to to get out of where I needed to be mentally to do my job. Um, so I didn't have a ton of rivalries. I, you guys might hear, uh, remember the name. There was one guy, uh, Matt Hackett. So back when I was young, coming in, I was with Texas, um, and he was in Houston at the Arrows. Uh, for some reason, they just got to be heated games all the time, and we'd get chirping, and he'd be, even if he was backing up, he'd be chirping me from the bench, <laughs> and we'd be going back and forth. So it was kind of, that, that little rivalry kind of got my blood pumping. Just, you really wanted to stick it to him. Like, you just, there's no way you wanted to lose to him. 
uh, just and so that was probably one of the the closer like actual rivalries that I had going into it, and then and then from there, like I said, I tried to stay in my own mental universe and not mm-hmm. get too caught up on what was going on on the other end of the ice. Yeah, the mental game in, in goaltending. Uh, we don't have enough time for me to really ask all the questions I want to yeah. ask about about being. Yeah, and a some guys can do that, and it, yeah. you know, and it gets them going. Like they get they get chirpy or chippy, and it mm-hmm. kind of fires them up, and they get that extra edge. And and there's other guys that just you know want to be a little more calm and steady and lock, lock know, it they in. Really, just yeah. focus in on their their plan of attack, and that's what they need. So yeah, like you said, it's we can go on. For a long time about yeah. the mental side of goaltending because to me it's you know it's the game is probably 90 percent mental for goalies out there like we can all move and and do stuff but if you lose your mind you're uh you're in trouble quickly no doubt about it between the years maybe the most important part of a goaltender uh before we get to our explore minnesota state of hockey trivia one final question for you i appreci- appreciate you indulging me here bacher the scariest shooter that you ever had to stare down you brought up Jamie Benn, a young Jamie Benn, you brought up playing with Yarmir Yager. I mean, those are two, well, for sure, one of the greatest players to ever play. And, and then Jamie Benn, probably one of the better players of his generation. When yeah. I ask you that question, who jumps to mind? Um, the scariest shot, just pure shot, probably would have been Sheldon Surrey. Oh, yeah. The hammer. Yeah. So uh, I, and it wasn't even playing against him. Because in games, it's never... I mean, they're heavy, right? Like, they, they come on you, but mm-hmm. you've got the adrenaline going and stuff. But uh, I was fortunate enough. I played with him in Dallas, and we'd be going on early doing goalie drills or whatnot, and he'd come out, and it ended up being part of the routine because you're like, if I can stop this guy right now, the other shots are going to seem slow. <laughs> but he he would just walk into clappers, and he'd, you know, practically blow your hand off. It, wow. it was just heavy, hard, like, it just – felt like the puck weighed five times as much as it normally does when it hits you so facing that quite a bit uh, you know that was when you started thinking I better get a practice glove I need something <laughs> with a little more durability in here so that one was pretty frightening but then as far as scary shooters for me personally the one thing that comes to mind was my yeah I believe it was the last game my first year with Dallas um, and last game of the season we're playing Detroit Speaking of Detroit, and we end up going into a shootout. So we got Datsuk, Zetterberg, <laughs> and then Yari Hoodler coming down. Yeah. And so I'm thinking in my mind, oh man, like what did I just get myself into? <laughs> like, and so I forget the order because it was a long time ago, but it was Datsuk, Zetterberg comes down and actually shoots. And I was like, whoa, I wasn't expecting that. Like, he yeah. could have deked me into another world. Yeah. Ends up shooting, hits the post, misses. I'm like, all right, got through that one. The other, the other guy comes down, puts on a deke, and I like slide into the corner. I am toast. <laughs> I don't think he could have had any more net unless I was on the bench. And rings it off the crossbar. No way. Out. So I'm like, all right, got two for two, right? Doing good. I haven't made a save yet, but two for two. So then we get to Hoodler, who now I'm thinking, all right, He's just going to come down and shoot, and he's a great player, but he wasn't exactly known with those two guys going ahead of him. Mm-hmm. I wasn't thinking, all right, he's going to come down and make this great move, so I'm like playing it kind of like a shot. He comes down, he goes like forehand, forehand, or backhand, forehand, gets me to bite just a little bit, one hand it does the Forsberg move, and then tucks it in the far side, and we end up losing the shootout, but I was like... <laughs> But I look back on that, and it's you know it's pretty awesome to say you went head to head against those those amazing players of the game. Oh, I, I, I'm just I, I'm only imagining like having seen the videos of Datsuk and and the goalies that he's posterized. Like to to be sitting there at the other end of that is just incredible. Yep. Uh, that, that's hey, a, someone <laughs> someone's got to be on those highlight reels. Someone's got to be on the other end. I was watching. I was on Twitter the other day, and Kane had uh, they were going through. I don't know, like his top 10 goals or something because he's had those amazing backhand spin around goals. Yeah. And guilty. <laughs> in there. You're so on I, there. First clip, I'm like, ah, yep, that's me. <laughs> so we've all, we've all been there. But, uh, uh, you know, when you're playing, you're like, you, you get a little, you're like, you, you know, you're competitive. And you're like, damn, like I, yeah. I don't want to be that guy. But now looking back and you take a second, you're like, it's still pretty cool to oh be up against gosh. those guys. Yeah. 
And there's you know, a lot of world class players that do amazing things. There's a lot of people who would have happily been on the other end <laughs> of a Patrick Kane spinorama goal and probably smiled skating away from the goal crease, unlike <laughs> you did at the time. Yeah. Uh, but uh, no, that's the, uh, wow, that's just great stuff, Bach. I appreciate you taking a trip down memory lane with me there. That's just, again, just to use the line earlier, we could sit and talk for the next two hours and I could sit and listen and smile and laugh. Those are great stuff. Um, as we get towards the end of our show here, uh, an opportunity for fans to get their hands on a pair of tickets coming up to our April 23rd game versus Rockford. Here's the question. If you get the answer correctly commented on our Facebook, you will get your hands on some tickets. This Minnesota town served as inspiration for Laura Ingalls Wilder's Little House on the Prairie series. Today, the home in the town is a museum and a summer pageant, which is dedicated in Laura Ingalls Wilder's name. What is the name of the town in Minnesota? While fans head to the Google machine, I'm sure to find that answer. Uh, Bacher, let's talk about next weekend. Uh, again, we're not at home until April 23rd and 24th. This weekend, the team heads to Grand Rapids to take on the Griffins, where, I shouldn't say where, but against who, this long stretch of great hockey began back here on April, or pardon, March 27th here at Wells Fargo Arena in a 5-2 win. 6-0-2 for you guys. Griffins, meanwhile, have lost their last three. So a little bit of a tale of two cities between the two teams coming up against each other this weekend. But, uh, Bacher, when your coaching staff talks about all the good things that have been happening, and there's been a lot of them for this wild team recently, there's always some things that you want to see shored up. What has been addressed as a potential stumbling block for this team that could help put a, an opponent in the driver's seat against you guys coming up here this weekend? Yeah, I think going back to what's given us success is special teams, right? Um, and, and kind of up until last night, which we were really good and disciplined and not taking penalties, we've been a little bit undisciplined at times, um, taking a few too many penalties. Mm -hmm. we, so I think going into this series, a big key for us is, is having good discipline, limiting our penalties, and not, not relying on our penalty kill so much to get the job done. Um, so I think that's a big key. And then just being, having good puck management being smart with the puck. Where we get ourselves into a little bit of trouble is when we, we try and get away from what we are and we're a good hard-nosed hockey team that, that can grind it out in the corners and the guts of the ice. And when we lose sight of that a little bit and we don't have good puck management, we can kind of feed other teams transitions. And mm -hmm. you know that's what everyone in hockey wants to go out on, the, go on the transition. They want to be in on the rush. Um, we want to do that, other teams want to do that. So if we can have good puck management, good discipline, um, you know, we look to keep this thing rolling. Well, Bacher, this has been an absolute blast. Uh, really enjoyed this, enjoyed talking wild, enjoyed talking uh, certainly about your time in the National Hockey League and, and some of those feared shooters and those, those great goaltending battles that you had. Um, I definitely want to give you a big thank you. I know our fans enjoyed this, and there's going to be people that I'm going to push towards watching this when we get it up on YouTube because this has been a great, great time. So thank you. I appreciate it, Bacher. Yeah, thanks for having me. This has been awesome. Enjoyed it. I uh, do have a, a winner in our Explore Minnesota trivia, uh, State of Hockey trivia, as the correct answer given to us by Aaron Harbison. Walnut Grove, Minnesota is the official town that was the inspiration for the Laura Ingalls Wilder show, Little House in the Prairie. So congratulations to Aaron. Shoot us a Facebook message, and we'll get you lined up with two tickets for our next home series here April 23rd and 24th against the Ice Hogs. Thanks to Richard Bachman for joining me here today. Thanks to all of you for joining us here today. I'm going to try to get Joe back on here next week. We'll see. I, I think he almost kind of punted to, to Bacher today, and, and he called in the rookie first-year coach and probably twisted your arm a little bit, Bacher. So hopefully it wasn't as bad as, as he uh, he listed it out to be. Uh, but we'll see if we can't get Joe back on next who, who, week. Uh, who's Joe? <laughs> yeah. Who's Joe? I haven't seen Good. him around in a while. Good. I hope he's <laughs> listening to that. I was joking before the show. He's probably going to create a burner account on Facebook and come on and carve both of us. I haven't seen any bad. Right. comments so maybe he didn't get to it no it's good to have it's good to have joe back though <laughs> it is. after his time up in the national league so. it is no doubt about it so thanks again to bacher thanks to all of you for joining us uh, this has been wild wednesdays presented by explore minnesota